Hello everybody, it's Alex Bell. Welcome to the channel. In my last video, I gave away this hat. Uh, I'll put the winner on the screen. Congratulations to the winner and thank you to everyone who participated. To make sure that I get the right person, someone doesn't pretend to be him and take the hat, if that person could please go to their other comment, edit it, and then put uh, like a different way for me to reach out, Twitter, Instagram, something like that, and uh, I'll reach out to you, get some mailing information, and I'll send you the hat. So. Thanks everybody, let's get into today's video. Recently there was a launch of a new electric pickup truck from a company called Lordstown Motors. In this video we're gonna talk about who Lordstown Motors is, we're gonna talk about their launch event, and then we're gonna talk about the truck. So let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. Lordstown Motors are a small startup located in Ohio, in Lordstown, Ohio, and uh, they were founded by a man named Steve Burns. He's the CEO. Steve Burns also founded a company called Workhorse Group, and they actually own 10% of Lordstown Motors. Workhorse Group is trying to win a multi-billion dollar deal right now with the USPS to make electrified USPS trucks, so that's pretty cool. So Lordstown Motors has one factory so far, one facility that they're in the process of uh, setting up for production, and it's actually a shuttered, recently shuttered GM facility that closed down in early 2019. So they've been really uh, on top of it, like this stuff's happening really fast, like the GM factory is shut down in early 2019, and now already they're announcing a truck and it's like mid-2020, like seems like they're moving pretty quick. And it's kind of interesting that their facility is an ex-GM facility because Tesla's Fremont facility was actually a GM place as well. Not a good trend to see if you're GM. <laughs> Lordstown bought their 6 million square foot facility for $20 million. That's pretty much all I need to know about them as a company, so let's go right into the launch event and talk about how that went. So it opened with Jim Tressel, who is the president of Youngstown State University, and he opened up and thanked everyone for coming, and then he opened with a big claim. And you'll notice that's kind of a theme in this event. Big, bold claims. He opened up by saying, this is going to be the first electric pickup truck to market in the world. So right away, these guys are already preemptively patting themselves on the back for being first to market. So I'll let you guys decide how you feel about that, but uh, interesting. He didn't really say anything else related to the truck, and then he introduced Aaron Spring, who is the director of new ventures at Goodyear Tires. Aaron just kind of talked about Goodyear Tires as a company, he didn't say a single word about the truck, and left the stage. And then they cut to a video. The video was a tour of their new plant, and you could tell in the video that all the standard equipment used to manufacture cars uh, was there. In the video, they mentioned how they're trying to keep the original equipment and retool for their new truck. After this little promo video, Steve Burns, the CEO, was introduced. Steve said that the vehicle they'd be bringing out today was a prototype and they would be producing uh, actual production run vehicles next year in 2021. Uh, he also reiterated the first speaker's claim that they would be first to market. You'll notice again, there's a theme that comes up more than once. And then eventually, he actually said a spec in relation to the truck, and it took 20 minutes into the event to hear something, but uh, after about 20 minutes, he said that the miles per gallon E, so the MPGE, would be 75. And then after that, he talked about their drivetrain, uh, which is definitely a little bit different than the traditional EV drivetrain. When we get into the truck later, we'll talk about it more in depth, but basically it's, uh, they're using hub motors, so they're kind of almost like motors that are outboard from the truck and the, the motor's actually inside the wheel. Kind of like how an electric skateboard or electric scooter works. After that, Steve made more bold claims. I'm gonna read them off, there were quite a few, and uh, pretty bold, so let's, let's read them off. One, they will have the best traction of any pickup truck ever made. And these are all nearly word for word. They will have the safest pickup truck ever made. They will have the best fuel economy, that's his words, not mine, of any truck ever made. It will handle better than any truck ever made. He again said they would beat everyone to market for EV pickups. He claimed that they had the first year of production already sold. And when he said that, I was like, oh wow, well that's kind of impressive. What kind of numbers are you talking about? What's your first year of production? But he didn't say that, but we'll get into that later. And then he also claimed that the factory that they bought used to put out 400,000 cars a year. I think they made Chevy Cruises there. And they think they can do more like 600,000 because they have less moving parts and less complexity. Wow, so obviously a lot of optimism from their CEO, which I, I guess is a good thing. He then introduced the Secretary of Energy for the United States of America, Dan Brule, I think is how you pronounce it. Dan also said nothing about the truck. Uh, he just talked about the Lordstown community and uh, its future place in the electric vehicle market. Then after like a two minute break, maybe due to technical difficulties or maybe they just had to stall a little bit, uh, they rolled out the truck, it was finally time. So they cut to a little promo video before rolling it out and then it happened. They f fire up their smoke machine and out comes the truck to make a long, dark, slow, two minute long journey to the stage. They drive it up on the stage and who jumps out other than Mike Pence? 
uh, kind of interesting, right? <laughs> At this point, I was a little thrown off because we'd have heard all of maybe two specs in relation to the truck, and now the vice president's coming on stage. Like, is he part of the engineering team or something? Like, what gives? Like, what am I in for now, you know? <laughs> well, as politicians do, he talked for about 23 minutes, and he said exactly two things relating to the truck. So I'll skip all the politics that he went over, and I'll just give you the two things he said about the truck. One of the things he said about the truck was what everyone else had said. Once again, they're going to be first to market. Seems like being the first electric pickup truck is, like, really important to this company. And then the second thing he said in relation to the truck was a little bit more interesting. So you know how before I said how the CEO claimed that they had the first year of production already sold? And I was thinking, that's not a real number. How many do you have pre-sold? And uh, I don't know if Mike Pence was supposed to say it, but he said what the pre-order number was, and it was a whopping $14,100 pre-orders. Then he wrapped up his speech, and that was it. Stream ended. He said two things about the truck. CEO said maybe one other thing about the truck. We heard maybe one or two specs. Pretty disappointing launch, to be honest. So I'm going to do what they didn't do, and I'm going to go over the specs, because uh, they do have some information on the website about the truck. I'm not sure why they didn't mention it at the event, but I'm going to go over some basic specs first. And then I want to dive in a little bit to this hub motor situation because it's definitely what they have going on for them that's a little bit unique compared to every other pickup or even any electric vehicle I've ever seen. So let's start with basic specs, then go over the hub motor. Okay, so range. Last year they were saying 200 miles. Like in just in December of last year, I think they were saying 200 miles. Now they're saying 250 EPA estimated miles. Zero to 60 time, 5.5 seconds. This one I thought was kind of interesting, maybe not in a good way. Top speed, 80 miles an hour. Uh, the drivetrain is all-wheel drive, of course. There's a motor in each wheel. We'll go over that in a second. Uh, system output of 600 horsepower. AC charging in 10 hours and DC charging in a half hour to one and a half hours. It's got onboard power, uh, 30 amps at 120 volts to power tools or whatever else. Seats 5. Towing capacity is 7,500 pounds. And lastly, pricing uh, starts at $52,500, but it is eligible for the $7,500 tax credit. So you could say that it costs or starts at 45000 So let's dig into this motor system. I kind of mentioned it briefly before. It's more similar to an electric skateboard or scooter than it is a traditional EV setup, which is interesting. Uh, let's kind of go over what their reasoning is and what they're saying about this setup and why they're using it. And then I'll share my opinion. I'm not an engineer, but I'll share my opinion. And uh, we can talk about it in the comments, whether it's a good idea or not. So it's a four motor setup, but the motors are in the hub or in the wheel instead of uh, inboard with CV axles going to the wheels. So is this better or worse than a normal setup? Um, I can't say from experience because I've never driven it and this is the first vehicle like it, but I do know that car makers generally put in a lot of effort to reduce unsprung weight. Uh, unsprung weight is any weight that is connected to but not supported by the suspension. So braking components, tires even, wheels, uh, those kind of things. Uh, you want to try to limit that weight as much as possible uh, to improve handling and driving characteristics typically. From what I do understand about unsprung weight, it's really just basic physics, right? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if you have a lot of weight and a lot of mass in the wheel, when it hits a bump, there's more mass that's going to move and transfer into the suspension and thus into the vehicle and potentially into the driver uh, when you hit bumps. Also more mass that you need to steer and also more rotational mass that the brakes have to work to stop. And when I look at their hub motor setup, it kind of looks like they're putting all the weight of the motors directly inside the wheel. And I, I guess I wonder uh, how much it weighs and how much it weighs compared to a regular truck wheel. I mean, you'd think it'd be much heavier. I, I don't have any specs on that because I haven't shared any, but uh, I'm a little concerned about that setup. I, I would need to be convinced that, that this is a good idea, right? And uh, unfortunately, they didn't use this launch event to convince me of that, and there's nothing on their website to tell me why this is a good idea. So as a EV person and a car person, I'm kind of concerned. And you know, the other aspect of this is the wheels and tires take the most abuse of any component on a vehicle by far, right? They're directly in contact with the road and all of the grime, salt, dirt, potholes, all of these types of things that are on the road and, and the wheels and tires are what take the brunt of all that. And putting the motor right in the wheel seems like you're going to be exposing it to a lot of things you might not want to be exposing an electric motor to unnecessarily. Um, so what's their reasoning? Why are they saying that they're doing this? I could only really find one statement on the website and I'll read it off for you guys. So the website says this, what makes hub motors more efficient? Less wasted motion. All energy output goes directly into the wheels for immediate movement. 
that sounds good, but I feel like I need some actual data on the inefficiency of a simple CV axle. I mean, in a regular setup like Tesla, uh, Rivian, pretty much every EV where the motor has a shaft that goes into the wheel, is that not still directly turning the wheels? Like, what's the inefficiency of a CV shaft or a CV axle? I just... I don't know. I don't know. I need to be convinced of this. Uh, I really do. And that being said, I'm not coming at this from a point of view of like a hater. Uh, I don't think the vehicle looks bad. I think it looks like it would appeal to a lot of people who the Cybertruck maybe is a little too out there for, and maybe the Rivian's a little too expensive for. Uh, I think there might be a market if it's a good vehicle. And if their hub motor system is different because it's better and it's an improvement, then I'll be 100% behind it. But if it's different for the sake of being different, so to wrap things up, Lordstown's really making some big claims here that they're going to be the first to market. I'm curious what you guys think of that. Do you think they will actually be first to market, considering they, they don't have their facility ready, they only have a prototype, and they just started last year? I have some doubts. I, I mean, the EV truck race is kind of going on, and I wonder who will be first. What do you guys think? Uh, if you could answer that, that would be amazing. Also, another question. Do you guys care who's first? Because, <laughs> I mean, they seem to have such an emphasis on being first, personally. If they're first, but it's the worst option, I'm not, I'm not going to buy it. I'll wait for the one I want. So two questions for you guys in the comments, if you could. Uh, who do you think will be first? Tesla, Rivian, Ford maybe, or Lordstown Motors? And the second question, do you really care who's first? Personally, I don't care about having the first EV truck. I want the best one. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.